Kelly Powers and today I'm going to be painting this mountain landscape. It's going to be a palette knife painting today and so basically I'm going to fill in the first layer with the brush and then do all the rest in palette knife. So the mountain and the flowers and grass down here is palette knife. And so this is the painting I did and this is the uh, reference photo that I have. I got it off of Pixabay. It's a royalty free website so you could probably look up mountain on Pixabay and find it. Um, my paint colors I'm going to be using is titanium white, cadmium red medium, cadmium orange, yellow oxide or yellow ochre. You could use yellow oxide too. It's basically the same. Um, phthalo green, phthalo blue, and burnt umber. And the brushes I'm going to use is a probably about a three fourths inch bright. And I think I'm going to use the mop brush. I'm not sure, but that's what I used last time. So I think I'm going to use that. And then the palette knife. Mine is kind of oval shaped, but you could use a pointed one or whatever palette knife you have. And I'm also going to use a watercolor pencil for the drawing. So I'm going to start by taking the watercolor pencil and marking out my middle. So the middle of the canvas is around here. So I'm going to put a spot right there. And the grass kind of starts, makes like a hill and then goes back up. And so this part doesn't have to be just like mine. Really, none of it has to be just like mine. Just kind of make some hills and dips and things like that. And then there's going to be another hill back behind it that kind of goes up like this and then if you split the canvas into fourths then there's another hill that's going to come about right here and down and there's another hill behind it that kind of comes around Okay, so this is the furthest hill, then there's this big space, and then there's a smaller hill here, and then another hill that's closest to us. So then the mountains are, if you do it into fourths again, the top of the mountain is probably right there. So, and then if you split it into thirds, it's going to be somewhere in here, so... I'm going to do the top, and it's kind of like two bumps at the top of the mountain. And it comes out, and you're going to want to do the edges all irregular. And then it kind of is a slope out this way. And then the other mountain starts about here, and it's got two bumps at the top, too. We want this mountain that's in front to be a little taller. And then it comes and goes out. So it's almost like these are kind of connected a little bit, but there's like a dip right in here. So that's why you're seeing this in front, but it kind of connects still. So it's, it's it peaks twice, but it's almost it's like the same mountain. And then we've got a spot here that's kind of like where the darkness is. So this is all pretty dark, and then this is more where the sun is. Okay, so that's pretty much all I'm going to do for drawing it. 
So I'm going to take the 3 4 inch bright and wet it, uh, dip it in my water, and I'm going to get some white just by itself. And I'm going to put that in this bottom area. And if it blends a little bit with the pencil, it's okay. So I'm just going to go up like halfway where the sky is with it and I'll put a little bit of it on this side. This is a really easy project. I thought it was going to be one of the harder ones, but I wasn't sure at that point if I was going to do a palette knife or not, which really, even if you didn't do a palette knife, it wouldn't be very hard, but I thought it was going to be harder and it turned out to be really easy so and you can see how it's picking up the blue <clears throat> excuse me I just got over being sick so I s still sound a little bit like I have got it but so I'm going to get the blue the phthalo blue with the white and put that up at the top. I'm going to get some water to help it go on better. And the top of the sky is going to be the darkest part. We want to hurry before that white dries so that we can blend it. Okay, so now I'm going to clean up my brush. I really probably should have done the blue first so that I won't, wouldn't have any of this blue in my brush, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm going to get the white and go up to the blue. I was pretty close up there, but I hadn't gotten all the way there on that side. Okay, so then I'm going to take my mop brush, and you don't want to wet it. And I'm just going to kind of blend the edge out. I'm going to do it over here too. So it kind of makes it look like there's a bunch of clouds down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so they're blending up into the blue and fading out.
make sure I cover the canvas with this blue and white. I don't want any of the canvas showing. All right, so that's pretty good. So I'm going to rinse my mop brush out because that's the only time I need it. Okay, and now I'm going to get the mountain filled in. So for that, I'm going to do phthalo blue and burnt umber. <clears throat> And it makes like a really dark bluish gray. It's almost teal kind of, but doled out. So I'm gonna put that where I want my mountain. And you can make the make the sides irregular. It kind of slopes really far down here and then it comes out. So this is the base of our mountain. We're going to put the white and other colors that make it look like a mountain on top with a palette knife and it's going to give it a really hard rock look. So for down the bottom of that part I'm going to lighten it a little more and put that in so I want it lighter than at the very top because that's where the snow is at the bottom. We do want it to be dark but we don't want it to be the color it's going to be or we're not going to see the rock look. It's all the same color, but I do want it to be a little lighter there. <clears throat> okay, so then I'm going to take some of this and put it in here. And it kind of, this side goes this way and this side goes the other way. So you can put your brush strokes in that direction to indicate that. Okay, so now I'm going to get some more of that and make a darker version and put that, oh, I got some green. I'm going to redo that because I got the green in it and it's going to make it look like a teal mountain. I don't want that so right in here there's like a dark area that it 
goes into. It kind of slips in slightly. And then we're going to get the white again with it and put in some right here. Maybe add some water to make it flow better. So now we've got the base filled in. And step back and look at it. Okay, so it looks pretty good. There is a dark part right along here that I want to get in. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna get my green. And I still have that stuff in my brush, but it's okay, because I'm gonna be mixing a darker color with this anyway. So I'm gonna get the brown, the burnt umber with it to make it dark, and I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna get some of the red with it, because red and green are opposite on the color wheel, and they'll make like a brown, so it'll dull, the red will dull the green as well. So, I'm just gonna take that and put it in the fill areas. I'm going to add some water to it to help it flow off my brush better. And the hills can be as hilly or as flat as you want. So they don't have to be the same shape as this. Just put them however you would like. So if you're new to my channel, um, welcome. I have a lot of other painting, well I shouldn't say a lot, I have other painting tutorials on my channel. I think I have like uh, 10, or I think I have 11 plus this one. So you can check those out and there's some beginner ones and there's also some more uh, like an immediate ones for people who have paint painted before or who want to get better at it or challenge themselves there's some harder ones on there so this was supposed to be one of the harder ones but it's it's not it's an easy one 
so you can subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up on this video if you liked it. Okay, and I think I'm going to get some of the mountain color and put it in to make it dark in some areas. There's dark right here. But we want to have the dark under so that when we go back and put the lighter color on top, there will be something dark under it so that it can pop off of the canvas. Okay, so this one is a really dark hill, so I'm getting some of that mountain color again with it. Okay. So I'm going to put this next mountain in, and you could take like some yellow oxide or something um, that's brighter um, to so that you can tell where the hill stops when you go to do your other grass, all your other grass um, flowers and things. You'll know where that is if you define it a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to get the darker color for the rest of the way down. And there's some red flowers in here, so I'm going to put some of the red, even more of it, where those patches are to kind of have some red under there for it. And there's some on this one too. Put that in. Okay, so that's our basic filled in the first layer. Um, so you can dry this if yours isn't dry with a hair dryer, but my mountain is over here is a little wet, but this part is dry, so I can start working on that with a pellet knife. And you're, I was going to say that your brush, you want to rinse it out and keep it wet while you're painting. Um, but it's not going to completely get clean just with water. You're going to have to wash it up with soap later. So you might want to just think about that. Keep wetting it while you're painting so that it doesn't dry out. The paint doesn't dry out in there. So I'm going to get, I actually think I'm going to take some of the dark, color for the mountain that we had and mix some more of that up and I when I load the palette knife I want to keep it pretty flat I don't that's the way I like to do it I just kind of squish it in on the bottom and then I slowly just kind of let it fall off. Some people load it with like a bead on 
the side and you can do that too but I just like this way better for me it's easier I feel like it does it, when you do the bead of paint on the end for me it tends to put like one big chunk of paint at the beginning and then the rest then it's just like off and there's no more to put on and I don't like it when it puts a big blob of it so But this is a really good painting for beginners because it's random and you don't really have to worry about how it comes out because it's going to fall off the palette knife in different ways and you're not really, you can't, you only have so much control over it. You can't control where every little piece of paint goes. So it, it's a little... It's less stressful, I think, for beginners because they can just have fun with it. Okay, and then I'm going to get the white. And I'm going to mix it with the gray a little bit. And we'll push that up in there. And then we're going to get more of the white, be brighter. And if we get into the grass a little bit, it's okay, because we're going to put some more stuff over that anyway, so I'm just trying to avoid it as much as I can. So you can see already how it's making it look like jagged edges, and it's making it look like a mountain. So this part I'm going to kind of angle this way. And you just kind of let it catch on to the canvas. I'm going to kind of put the paint in the usual, I'm not going to do it like a line um, for this edge of the mountain. I'm going to kind of put some light over into the dark and some dark over into the light and kind of make it look jagged and random. And there's a little bit of color right here. I'm going to put some lighter color in there. Sometimes I like to flip it um, to get into corners and kind of push the paint up in there. Okay, and now I'm going to take the dark color again and put that right in this crevice where it slopes in. It's pretty dark.
Now Margaret put some lighter in here too, but if you do try to do too many colors all at one time, because there are some places that it's dark and there's got some white spots in there, like some snow is in there, but it's still pretty dark. If you try to do the white and the dark together, it'll just kind of make a middle gray color and it won't look the way you want it to. So don't try to do all of them at one time, just kind of build the layers up. So there's some lighter colors in here. So see, I didn't know it was going to do that, but it's okay. I can, it's, snow's going to fall in weird places. It's not going to be exactly the way you thought it was going to be, but it's okay. And there's quite a bit of white right in here. There's a lot of snow, I guess, that has fallen in this. It must be like a dent in the mountain. And so a lot of snow is built, built up in there. That side's pretty dark, so I'm gonna get a dark color. And put that in there. There we go. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna leave that for now and let's see this part is pretty dry so I'm going to start on this and on the back it's funny because this part is I must have laid it on thicker right here it dried faster on this side I'm going to take some green and burnt umber and the reason I'm doing this same color that I used for a very similar color is because I don't want it I don't want to be able to see the brush stroke so much so I'm going to go over with the palette knife and the palette knife is what makes it look kind of like grass a little bit so I kind of want to cover over and put some dark that actually is the texture of grass When you do the edges of the mountains, you kind of have to define them whenever you go over. Because, see, yeah, I went over with the white of the mountain some. So I have to define, again, where the hill was. So I don't lose it. And you can tap too, and it'll put paint in different areas. Okay, so now I'm going to get some of the red in with it.
And it makes it really dark. Some of that in there. It's funny, um, in other videos um, on YouTube with palette knives, um, the sound um, that the palette knife makes is like a, I don't know, like a scraping sound. I don't know if you can hear it very much. I This is the sound that it makes. I'm not doing that a whole lot, but it's funny. You would... Most people would probably think that that sounds really bad. You probably really wouldn't like it, but I like it. I don't know why. I just, I like hearing that sound. It's kind of funny. So just kind of put texture in there. And if you wanted to really texture it, you could kind of like scratch grass in there. That might look kind of cool, but... I'm just going to leave mine like this. So that actually is would be a neat way to make grass is kind of put down some thick paint and then kind of scratch grass in there. That would be really neat. Put some in this hill now. And it's slightly different, a different color than what I was using. It's a little more green. So it's a little more of the uh, filler green than the burnt umber and the red. So it'll be a little lighter and we can see where that hill is. Outline painting is really fun to me because they're so um, random and you really don't have to worry about what it comes out as because it's just kind of do going to do what it wants to do. It makes it really fun because then really all you have to worry about is the colors you use and you know you get to focus more on the fun things instead of having to worry about what it comes out as because it's going to come out just kind of the way it wants to come out so makes it really neat so now i'm going to get some red and it's going to make like a dark red when it's mixed with the green it's going to dull it and make it a dark red and i'm going to put that some of it in here with where the red's going to be the flowers and it's gonna there's a lot of this red on this hill There's a little bit of it over here. Okay, so and there's a little bit down here. There you go. Okay. So now I think I'm going to do some more on the mountain. 
it's still kind of thick right there, but it's okay. So I'm going to mix this over here that we had up. There wasn't a whole lot of it. And now I'm going to make like a medium gray. I'm going to put some of that in here. And I'm going to put a little bit of that in this dark area to give it some, a little bit of snow on that side. I'm going to tap in some more of the dark color. And I'm going to get the white and go back over here where I got that. So I'm going to get some of this gray and put some of it in this dark area, maybe in here. And I'm going to get some more of that dark, put some more of that in. As long as you don't like glob it on, you can put more than one color on but if you like put it really thick in one area then if you put another color it will just mix with it and make a different color so i'm going to get the white and i'm going to tap it in Put a little bit over this. And I'm gonna put some more right in here and pull it up. Kind of like a dark spot right in there, so I'm leaving that. And there's some dark in here that you can put in. Okay, so this green is still wet, but I'm going to do some more on it. So I got the phthalo green and the yellow oxide. And it's making a lighter green. And I'm going to tap that in to places. Actually, it's a little more yellow. It's a very yellowish hill. I'll tap that in to the spots that are lighter so this is like the highlight grass
little bit in here. There, it's pretty dark right in here. And we're just gonna kind of put a little bit, but not much. And there's a little bit, oh, way too much. There's a little bit of it right along here. And that hill, but it's pretty, pretty dark, so. And then there's some one here. Okay, and then we're going to push that to the side, get some more yellow with a little of the green, and we might get a little bit of a red to go it a little bit. And do some light grass. And I'm only doing this in the parts that are that I'm seeing really light. was my cat if you heard that noise that's her way of kind of bringing attention to herself she makes this little noise to tell you she's here and wanting attention <laughs> So it's still kind of dark, but we're going to, the flowers are going to brighten it up. So I'm going to do a little more in the mountain because I don't want to do those other colors on the mountain right or, or the hills right away. It might make them all green. So. Put some white right in here. There's a little bit of it kind of coming out right here. And there's the really bright light right up here. There's a little bit right in that dark area. And 
Okay. And then I'm going to take the brown. Pretty much by itself. I think it's got a little bit of that blue in it. And I'm going to put some brown in the dark areas. And there's actually, I get that bluish dark color. And there's some, the dark spot right in here. And there's a dark spot right in here. And we're going to get some white and kind of make it not so dark right there. I'm going to get that brown and put some of it in the dark areas. And the reason I'm doing that is just because I don't want it all just to be blue. I want to add some kind of other color that will, you know, add a little more detail, I guess, to it. I'm going to take some of that dark color and kind of put just a little of light little dots in here. Okay, it looks pretty good. So now I'm going to take the white and put some patches of flowers in here. So these are white flowers. There's some on this hill. And if they blend a little bit with the mountain, it's okay, but I do want them to look white and not green. There's some up here. Okay. And then, well, actually there's a little bit more right here. And then we're going to get some of the yellow oxide with it. Make like a light yellow. Okay, so I'm going to take the yellow and make some yellow flowers. Not a whole lot. Actually, they may not even really be yellow flowers. It could just be really light grass, but I'm making it yellow flowers, so. And you can make the flowers whatever colors you want. You could do pink and purple, or you could do green, or 
not greens, sorry, they're not really green flowers. <laughs> um, you could do like um, the red color that's up here in here too. And you could do um, like peachy colors. You could just do whatever combination you like. Okay, and I'm going to take the orange and mix some white with it. And I would have to go back over with the orange um, because I want it brighter. But I put this in for now. So there's some in here and in here. And I'm going to take some of my, make some dark green with like this mountain color and refine the edges some more and then maybe take the light color that we had and Oh, and I was going to say, uh, the camera is showing up that there's like a tan, like light brown color right here. It's not. It's dark blue, <laughs> but it's uh, showing that, I think, because of the light is hitting it, and it's bouncing off as like a light brown, so it's not light brown. <laughs> Just wanted to let you know that. So that you don't put a light brown spot on your mountain. <laughs> okay, and now for the red, I'm gonna put a little bit of green to make it darker. Coco! <laughs> My cat just hopped in a box, that was that sound. She loves cardboard boxes, that's like her one of her favorite toys. cardboard box isn't even really for her. It's, I think it's supposed to be thrown away, but she's playing with it like it's hers, so. Okay, so now I'm going to get the bright red. Some of that in here and if it dries more dull the bright red if it dries dull then just go back over again with it once it's dry and it'll brighten it up again because when I put mine on it seemed to last time it seemed to kind of dull once once it was dry, didn't seem as bright as when I first put it on, so. Alrighty. So now I'm going to take that orange. it in 
This would probably work best if it was dry, but it's working pretty good. See how it's brightening it up? If I put this first, it probably wouldn't show up quite as bright. I mean, if, I, if you layer it really thickly, it might show, but if you put it kind of thin, it's probably not going to show up very well, so. take some of that green and kind of brighten that area up right there. Put some light in there. Don't want it that dark. Alrighty. So, let's see, this is pretty dry, so I'm going to sign it with my Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen, and I'm going to put it a finger's width away. Let's see, it may not show up. I think I'm going to get my white one. So this is the brush um, pen, but... And I wish that, I don't know if they have it in, um, in the other kind that my black is in, but it seems to be more transparent, and I don't really like that. So if I ever find this in the other kind, then I'd probably get that one instead, but... Okay, and it's probably going to fade. I might have to do it a few more times. But that's our mountain. And this is the schedule that I have. We only have one more for January. Um, so um, we're going to be doing the barn next week. And if you want to see any of these other ones, they'll be on, they're on my channel already. Um, if you click my picture... Um, it'll bring you to my channel and you can look at these other videos. And I have a schedule for um, February and March out already, but I had a poll in my rose video and I'm going to see if, if, uh, see if anyone voted on anything in there. So if you want to go to my channel, you can check those out. And I hope you have a nice day. Bye.